So good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This is second sticks this is second in the session covering foreign exchange hedging. Today we are going to speak about the relevance of the cash flow hedging program and at the same time we are going to speak about the various instruments which the corporate treasurer are going to use to hedge their cash flow hedging. Now these instruments can be further divided as per the requirement of the company because if you are working if you are working as an exporter then you have separate instruments in place. However, if you're working as an importer, you have a separate instrument in place. And at the same time, we must have to agree with the fact that it is the central bank of the, of the country which would definitely determine the amount of instrument which you can play in the system. Take a very simple example. If you take a very simple example, if you're working in Singapore, you're working in Hong Kong, you're working in the other Asian nationals and predominantly in Singapore, you will get to know the Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is the Central Bank of Singapore, which is giving you more leeway in terms of your hedging than you than you working in India, which is Reserve Bank of India. So predominantly it depends upon the the personality of a corporate treasurer and at the same time it depends upon which country you are living in. As we all know, Singapore is acting as a global financial center of the world, followed by Hong Kong. At least we can say from Asian point of view, Singapore is acting as, a, as an Asian financial center, followed by Hong Kong. Thank you very much for joining in. I am again repeating, we are going to cover the relevance of the cash flow hedging and the various instruments. However, today we will be able to cover the, the example of an exporter, which is Infosys. About myself, I am Rahul Magal, working as a corporate treasurer in EXL, taking care of the front and middle office and at the same time I am also working as a treasury trainer for various firms across the world, predominantly in Asia and also writing various books across the world. My first book which is already published in New York and second is about to publish in Australia at the end of the year 2014 and also, also a speaker with 26 global forums across the world. So here we are starting about cash flow hedging program. What do you mean by cash flow hedging? Cash flow hedging refers to the hedging of your cash flow exposures. What do you mean by cash flows? Cash flows refers to the amount of money which enters into your system, amount of money which goes out of your system. Cash flow is an integral part for every company in the world. In fact, it is the blood for any company in the world. If the company is short of cash, then company can then this situation can let the company to nowhere and at the same time if the company is full of cash then this makes company a better company in the world we can take an example of apple which is sitting on almost 110 billion dollar of free cash take an example of infosys to whom we are going to cover today is sitting on is, it is sitting on roughly 4 billion dollar of 4 billion dollar of cash IT industry as a whole, whether it is Apple, it is Yahoo, it is HP, it is Infi, it is Cognizant, it, 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 is, it is Janpak and other IT is companies, they are working on a huge cash. Cash flow hedging play a very important, important role in the, in the world of corporate finance because the rational here is due to outsourcing, majority of the business is shifting to Asian nations, however the principle, however the contract is nominated in the foreign currency. Take a very simple example, what is the relevance of cash flow? The relevance of the cash flow won't happen if you are doing business in the United States and at the same time your billing currency is in dollar because your billing currency is in dollar, your cost currency is in dollar, so there is no relevance of the cash flow hedging. However, relevance of the cash flow hedging would happen if the if the billing currency would be would, billing currency would be in dollar at the same time the work is happening be in Philippines or be in India. If the work is happening in India, then in that case you are subject to the you are subject to the volatility of USD INR to whom we have seen it depreciated by almost 25 percent and now because of the new government it is getting appreciated. If it is working in the Philippines, Philippines is too facing a normal appreciation or normal appreciation and depreciation of plus minus five percent. So it is predominantly important for an exporter to cover its cash flow hedging receivables. Now cash flow is basically you can say cash flow hedging is would be on both sides. One is the financial cash flow hedging, one is the non-financial cash flow hedging. Financial cash flow hedging refers to when the respective liability is in the books. Take a very simple example, you had taken a big loan in your books, which we are going to cover in the next session tomorrow. So if you have taken a big big loan in your book and that loan you have to repay, in that sense you have to do a cash flow hedging. However, the non-financial cash flow hedging refers to the hedging once you have your forecasted receivables and pay, pay payables in place. The receivable belongs to an exporter, however, payable belongs to a payable belongs to an importer. For an exporter, also you have a little bit kind of payables if you are not netting your trade off, you are not netting your trade finance position with your actual export position. In that sense, you are allowed to hedge your export receivable at one game and your import receivable at a second game. You, you are not supposed, supposed to net it off. Now, coming back to the example of cash flow hedging for an Indian IT company, in fact, the bellwether of the Indian IT led by Narendra Murthy, which is known as Infosys. Infosys is working on a top line of eight and a half billion dollars. However, at the same time, Infosys is working on a, on a cash flow hedging program of rolling six months. Now, 
What do you mean by cash managing for Infosys? A company which is on an $8.5 billion of receivable is definitely shown that the contract size, average contract size is over 7 months, 7 years, 8 years, 10 years. The company know that much amount of money is definitely going to hit the books sometime from now. And the company is subject to hedge himself from the, from the variability of the exchange rate, USD, INR, because majority of the work is happening is in India, however the foreign currency to move in which you are billing your client is in dollar. However, Infosys, TCS, SCL, Wipro, they are the companies who are billing in almost every currency of the world. They are billing in dollar, they are billing in GBP, they are billing in Aussie dollar, they are billing in Canadian dollar, they are billing in New Zealand dollar. <coughs> Apologies. They are covering almost all currencies of the world. At the same time, majority of their billing is happening from America, which means in dollar. We all know that as per the reports, approximately 58% of the billing of USD, 58% of the billing of Indian IT companies is happening from America, followed by roughly 30% from Europe and roughly 10% from, from other parts of the world, which is Asia, like Singapore, Hong Kong and others, Japan and, and others. Now, as an exporter, if I have to hedge my receivables, then I have a very system in place. Take an example, you're working in India, right? You're working as a, as a corporate treasurer of Infosys, you are working in India. Now, you have a forward contract, basically in India, you hedging, you hedge your receivables from plain vanilla forward contract. Second, you have an option contract. Third, you have swaps. Now, it is, I know it's, it's, it's really very difficult to assume that you can hedge your receivables by swaps as well, but you can do. At the same time, the forward contract, the option contract, and the non delivery and, and the swap contract are further divided into two parts. Whether you are delivering anything or you are not delivering, you are not delivering, you are not delivering, you are hedging as a non deliverable contract. In the delivery, you give your dollar, you get your money. In the non delivery, you hedge yourself in the offshore, offshore financial market, which is Singapore and Hong Kong. Now, what do you mean by forward contract? A forward contract is a contract in which you, you give your foreign currency and you get your INR. Now it's an obligation, right? It's an obligation of the company. The maximum you can do, you can cancel it and you can, you can roll over it. It simply means, as a corporate treasurer of Infosys, I'm selling $1 million today at an exchange rate of 65 for December 2015. So on December 2015, I am obliged to deliver $1 million to say JP Morgan and JP Morgan will give me 65 million INR maximum I can do I can roll over this or I can cancel cancel this well as we all know rollover is, is nothing but new contract the cancellation plus new contract and you do not know whether it's a gain or a loss in your books options refers to where you do have a right but not an obligation to honor your contract now option are further divided into two parts we all know call option and put option call option and put option are further categorized into two parts which is buy call and, and sell call, buy put and sell put. Call means for bullish people, for an importer who think INR would go up, it would depreciate, so let me hedge myself. Put means an insurance contract who is a bullish people who to who really who really don't want to hedge who want to hedge himself on the lower side. And further buy and buy and put are further divided into three three parts, which means out of the money, in the money and add the money, which means moneyness of the contract. Take a very simple example. If USD INR turning out to be 68 and you are doing a buy call of 60 or you are doing a buy call of 70 as an importer, it means it is out of the money. If USD INR turning out to be 68, you are doing buy put at 65, it means you are out of the money. If you are doing a buy call at 62, it means you are deep in the money. However, if you are doing a buy call at 6 buy put at 62, you are deep out of the money. So it is predominantly advisable to corporate treasure if they are doing a buy call, they do do deep out of the money, which means if INR is trading at 68, you should do at 70, in fact 75, which is deep out of the money buy call. If INR is trading at 68, you should do a buy put of 62, in fact 60, because that is deep, or that is deep out of the money put. This would help you to, to protect giving the premiums because an option you have to give premium and how a corporate treasurer are calculating premium this is via a model model known as black calls the next is the swaps you can do your cash flow hedging by doing swaps and swaps are further category for further categories as stick and stack that we are going to cover in the next session these all three instruments forward contract option contracts <coughs> my apologies these all three instruments, forward contract, option contract and swaps can be further taken into offshore, offshore treasury market which is Singapore and Hong Kong. In this, there is no need to deliver anything, rather the net is going to, the net settlement is going to have to happen whether you are going to pay, you are, you are going to receive. 53% of the USD INR is trading in, in Singapore market. 
this is as per Reserve Bank of India. The biggest difference between forward, con the biggest comp uh, difference between deliverable forward contract and non deliverable forward contract is that in deliverable forward contract you have to deliver something, in non deliverable forward contract there is no need to deliver anything. Now take, a, now take a again simple example, if I am doing a $1 million of a forward contract at 65 and if Infosys is going to honor it, if I am not turn out to be 70 that day, then Infosys is going to lose uh, it is going to lose 5 rupees. However, in the case of the not liberal forward contract, Infosys would pay 5 rupees to a bank, however, sell $1 million on spot in the market. So it's going to be offset. It's going to be offset. But that would happen only in the case of cash flow hedging program. In the case of the fair value hedging program, this may not be possible. So at the end, we would conclude that cash flow hedging will play a very, very significant role. And it is predominantly important for export treasurers to protect their cash flow hedging instruments. Cash flow hedging can be done via forward contract, option contract, and they can be done on swap. At the same time, they can be done in a deliverable market. They can be, they can be done in a non-deliverable market. Thank you very much for joining in. The next session which we are going to have tomorrow, we are going to cover in detail how a corporate treasurer who is on the export side would hedge his position using option contract and in this we will cover buy and put option in detail. Thanks for joining.